Good evening. Welcome to the Cabarrus County Board of Education business meeting for Monday, October 14th, 2019. I'll call the meeting to order. Please rise for the presentation of colors. Presenting tonight's colors are members of the Mount Pleasant High School Air Force JROTC under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel, <coughs> Colonel Tim Neal. Their personnel includes Cadet Major Cole Calicut, Cadet Major Josh Flanagan, Cadet Second Lieutenant Michaela Good, and Cadet Staff Sergeant Clay Newmeyer. Oh, Art. Honoring America tonight with the playing of our national anthem were members of the Hickory Ridge High School Brass Choir, and their personnel includes Brandon Jones, Hannah Cole, Abby Matula, Megan Taylor, Zach Villar, Violet Goldberg, Jordan Moore, Kyle Eiffel, Jordan Dawkins, Craig Malmet, Gavin Jones, and Andrew Roberts. The director of bands at Hickory Ridge High School is Mr. Chris White. Thank you. We welcome this evening Deputy Jacob Barrier from Hickory Ridge High School, the school resource officer. Thank you for joining us.
Board members, we'll start with setting the agenda. I'll take a motion to uh, adopt the agenda as presented. Move to adopt. Second. Mr. Harrison and Mr. Shoemaker, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 6-0. And we'll start with our recognitions uh, for Principal of the Year. Dr. Lauder. If Jennifer Brinson and any members of her family would please come forward. Congratulations to Jennifer Brinson, principal at Wolf Meadow Elementary School, who has been selected as the 2019-2020 Cabarrus County Schools Principal of the Year in a program sponsored by the North Carolina Department of Instruction and Wells Fargo. Brinson was surprised with an announcement during a Wolf Meadow Elementary School staff meeting on October 9th. Brinson joined Cabarrus County Schools in 2001 as an elementary teacher at Weinkauf Elementary. During her tenure with Cabarrus County Schools, she served in a variety of roles, including teacher, lead teacher, instructional specialist, assistant principal of instruction, and principal. Brinson moved to Wolf Meadow Elementary as assistant principal of instruction in 2013 and was named principal of Wolf Meadow in 2016. Brinson graduated with a dual bachelor's degree from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte in early childhood development and elementary education. She also earned her master's degree in educational leadership from Western Governors University. Previously, Ms. Brinson was named the Cabarrus County Schools assistant principal of the year. Brinson will now complete with, uh, compete with other principals across the state for North Carolina Principal of the Year. After the state selection process is completed, one principal will be selected as the 2020 Wells Fargo Principal of the Year. CCS principals nominate among their peers. A selection panel comprised of CCS district administrators interview the finalists and a winner is selected. Each regional Wells Fargo Principal of the Year receives a $1,000 cash award for his or her school and a $1,000 cash award for personal use. The 2020 Wells Fargo Principal of the Year receives $3,000 for his or her school and $3,000 for his or her personal use. Regional award recipients will be selected by February of 2020, and the state-level winner will be announced in the spring at a special luncheon in Raleigh. Please help me congratulate Ms. Brinson, our 2019-2020 Cabarrus County Principal of the Year. At this time, if Rick Money would please come forward with any members of his family. Congratulations to Rick Money, Assistant Principal at Concord Middle School, who has been selected as the 2019-2020 Assistant Principal of the Year for Cabarrus County Schools. Money was surprised this morning at Concord Middle School uh, during a staff meeting. He joined Cabarrus County Schools in 2012 as a secondary social, secondary social studies teacher at Cabarrus Kannapolis Early College. In, in 2016, Money became an assistant principal at Hickory Ridge Middle and moved to Concord Middle as assistant principal this past summer. Prior to serving in Cabarrus County Schools, he taught social studies in another school district. Mr. Money graduated with a bachelor's degree in history from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He also earned a master's degree in school administration from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. CCS assistant principals nominate and vote among their peers for the assistant principal of the year award based on a set of criteria. The top candidates are then interviewed by a panel of district administrators and a winner is selected. Mr. Money will now compete with other assistant principals across the state through a program sponsored by the North Carolina Principals and Assistant Principals Association. State assistant principal of the year winners will be invited to attend the National Principals Conference in July of 2020. The three national finals will be announced in March 2020, and the National Assistant Principal of the Year will be announced in April. Please help me congratulate Rick Money, our 2019-2020 Cabarrus County Schools Assistant Principal of the Year.
So we'll continue with recognitions with the Hilbish Ford Teacher of the Year, or Teacher of the Month, sorry, <laughs> and welcome Miss Ronnie Boone. Good evening. I'm excited to be filling in for Ms. Jones this evening. Um, we will be presenting the Hilbish Ford Teacher of the Month for October. Mr. Vaughn was not able to join us this evening, but we also, we always want to say thank you to him and to Hilbish Ford for their continued generosity and support of this recognition program. Our Hilbish Ford Teacher of the Month for October is Shelley Widenhouse. Would Ms. Widenhouse and her family and any members of her school's administrative team please come forward? <laughs> Shelly Widenhouse is a math teacher at Jan Fries Magnet Middle School. She was nominated for this award by a student who wrote, I believe this teacher deserves this recognition because she's very kind and caring and loves all of her students. She values our ideas and way of thinking, and she makes sure everyone understands a standard before moving <coughs> on. She makes her lessons fun and interesting, which helps students learn better. Ms. Widenhouse, congratulations on your selection as the Teacher of the Month, and thank you for the care, kindness, and fun you bring to your classroom each day. Please allow Dr. Louder to present you with your award and then allow our board members to congratulate you. And we'll continue with the Impact Through Education Awards. Yes. Before we begin, I want to welcome <laughs> broadcasting students who are here with us this evening from Cox Mill High School and their teacher, Mrs. Cindy Parada. They're here to film a special segment for TV21, so we want to welcome them and thank them for coming out this evening. I'd also like to invite Mr. Adrian Kaspar with AXA Advisors, Advisors to join me at the front of the room, please. Hey, how are you? Mr. Kaspar, we want to say thank you to you and to AXA Advisors for your sponsorship of these awards this school year. We appreciate your support. Tonight we're presenting Impact Through Education Awards to students and staff at Weddington Hills Elementary School and Harold E. Winkler Middle School. First up is Weddington Hills Elementary. Would any members of the Weddington Hills Elementary School leadership team please come forward at this time? Our first honoree from Weddington Hills Elementary School this evening is Amelia Dodd Dobbs. Would Amelia and her family please come forward? Okay, I'm gonna need you to squish in together. <coughs> nice and cozy. Step up to the line. <laughs> Amelia was nominated for the Impact Through Education Award for her exceptional character inside and outside the classroom. As a fifth grade student at Weddington Hills, Amelia values her classmates and fosters her love of learning daily. Amelia serves as a cool cat in the school community by choosing to support and serve other students in classrooms where she is needed. She shows great pride and responsibility as a news anchor and teleprompter operator for the WCAT News. In the classroom, Amelia strives to make sure others know that she is there to be a helpful and kind friend through her actions. Outside the classroom, 
Amelia strives to better her character through tennis and piano. The school community of Weddington Hills is truly a better place because of Amelia. Congratulations. Our next Weddington Hills Elementary School honoree is David Droda. Would David and his family please come forward? David Droda was born in Egypt and at a young age moved to the United States. He has attended Weddington Hills Elementary since kindergarten and is now in the fifth grade. David goes above and beyond in the area of student leadership and is an excellent role model for others. He is part of the Math Olympia team, the Odyssey of the Minds team, and the Flag Patrol. In addition, he shows his kindness and caring personality by serving as a peer buddy to a structured learning student who spends time in his classroom. David's favorite subject is math. He loves playing soccer and plays for a recreational team. His dream is to become a soccer player. David can also speak multiple languages, including Arabic. Throughout the years at Weddington Hills, he has become a valuable member of the school community and made an important impact on the total school environment. Congratulations, David. Our next Weddington Hills honoree is Mary Hooks. Would Mrs. Hooks and her family please come forward? <laughs> Mary Hooks is an integral part of Weddington Hills Elementary and works diligently to support the students, staff, parents, and entire school community. As the IB coordinator, she works daily to cultivate and grow a love of learning paired with a global focus in order to produce lifelong learners who are global citizens. In addition, she leads by example and is an outstanding role model for teachers at the school. She possesses an uncanny ability to support teachers in ways that allow them to better facilitate learning for their students and produce global learners. Ms. Hooks has a global mindset with all that she does, and her passion for education pushes her to lead others in making a difference in the world. Without a doubt, she has an immeasurable impact on students, families, educators, and all those involved in the teaching profession as she continues to extend her educational reach into the school, our county, our state, and our world. Thank you, Ms. Hooks, for all that you've done to make Weddington Hills a wonderful place to learn and grow. Congratulations. And our final Weddington Hills honoree this evening is Kelly Lewis. Would Ms. Lewis and her family please come forward?
As you walk into the front office of Weddington Hills Elementary, you will be met with the smiling face and warm hello of Ms. Kelly Lewis. Mrs. Lewis's, Mrs. Lewis's official title is front office secretary, but that doesn't even begin to capture who she is to Weddington Hills Elementary. Each and every day, she successfully juggles many responsibilities at the school, and she excels at each one of these roles. She is an organizer, a planner, a communicator, a listener, a risk taker, and a nurturer. Her calm personality and effective communication skills create a welcoming environment for students, parents, and visitors. Her positive attitude is contagious, and she strives daily to spread joy into the lives of others. Kelly is a natural leader, and she has had an overarching impact on the student, staff, and school community at Weddington Hills. The school is a better place because of Kelly Lewis. Congratulations. Now we'll move on to our Impact Through Education Award honorees for Harold E. Winkler Middle School. I'd like to invite any members of the Winkler Middle School administrative team to come forward at this time. Our first honoree from Winkler Middle is Brody McCartan. Would Brody and his family please come forward? Brody McCartan is an 8th grade student at Winkler Middle School. His role model is Elon Musk because he is innovative and determined. Here's what one of Brody's former teachers had to say about him. Brody McCartan is much more than the year-long 100% written in my grade book. His positive attitude, desire to learn, and inquiry-driven mind pushed him to question every problem at hand. He examined every lesson under a filtered lens, avoiding all pre-existing biases. He never quit and was eager to learn from those around him, no matter how rarely they may have participated. He's a kind and decent young man who will do unbelievable things in his life. I'm so proud to have taught him, and more so be a part of my classroom community. His impact on those around him, teachers or students, is unavoidable, and I cannot wait to see what life has planned for his future. Congratulations. Our next Winkler honoree is Sarai Opsaint. Would Sarai and her family please come forward? <coughs> Sarai is an eighth grade student at Winkler Middle School. One of her teachers wrote, Last year was Sarai's first year attending public school after being homeschooled. She joined Girls on the Run and Heart and Soul as a means to make new friends and be a part of a team. She was a little shy at first, but warmed up to her coaches and teammates very quickly. She was always willing to work with other girls no matter what grade they were in. She always had, a, she always had wonderful feedback when asked questions about the lesson. This year as an eighth grader, she has definitely stepped up as a leader on the team. 
We've only had five practices so far this year, but she's already taken on that leadership role. She's led warm-ups, contributed great feedback in discussions, pushed herself on the track to be a model for the other girls, and has been flexible working with new teammates. She has a wonderful, infectious personality that draws people to her. She is quiet and confident and has many leadership qualities. Sarai's, Sarai's role model is Hermione Granger because she is smart, determined, and loyal, and proud of who she is. And we congratulate her on this Impact of Education Award. Our next honoree from Winkler Middle School is Erin Lee. Would Mrs. Lee and her family please come forward? Erin Lee is an outstanding math teacher at Winkler Middle School. Mrs. Lee teaches two sections of eighth grade math one section of Math 1 and serves as the school's lead math teacher. Every student in her classroom is blessed with her knowledge, experience, drive, and the strong community she creates. In addition, she works with both the 6th and 7th grade teachers to help support their students. This includes co-teaching, modeling best practices, and working with small groups of students to help them be successful. Often she works through her planning with other classes to make sure every student gets the best opportunity to be successful. Her colleagues describe her as a great teacher and mentor and say that she has a wealth of knowledge and is so humble about sharing it. Congratulations, Mrs. Lee. And our final Impact Through Education Award recipient this evening from Winkler Middle School is Mr. Rob Goodman. Would Mr. Goodman and his family please come forward? Rob Goodman is Winkler's empowerment coach. He works with students who are sometimes the most difficult to connect with. Mr. Goodman is always firm but positive and encourages students to be their best and do their best. He has become one of the resident experts on restorative practices by helping students understand the impact of their decisions on others and teaches them how to be reflective about their choices. In addition, Mr. Goodman is a presence in the building as he greets students each morning with his microphone at the front door, calling them by name, he makes it to almost every class change and spends lunchtime in the cafeteria talking to students. Mr. Goodman consistently goes above and beyond, directing traffic every afternoon, putting mulch along the front of the school, building a student conference room, and making signs to help with parent drive. Winkler Middle School is blessed to have Mr. Goodman. Congratulations.
Now we have a little bit of an unusual presentation. Dr. Louder has a recognition that the board has earned. Yes, my, it is my honor to present to the school board the North Carolina School Board Association Gold Bell Award. Um, it is presented to when all board members complete 12 hours of training in one school year. The certificate says the Gold Bell Award is for whole board training presented to the members of the Cabarrus County Board of Education for training, excellence, and commitment during the 2018-2019 North Carolina School Board Association Academy Year of the North Carolina School Boards Association Academy of School Boardsmanship. Um, so please join me in congratulating the board on this, this work. <laughs> Is anybody coming down to receive this and shake the board's hand? You can just bring it back. Okay. <laughs> I do want to note, though, that I believe we are the, of the only elected body who has a legislated requirement to obtain continuing education. It kind of makes sense, but I think that there could be benefit to all elected officials in the state to have to do some continuing education. Our legal requirement is 12 hours every two school years, and we all achieved it in the past school year, including our most recently elected folks. So. Um, that was pretty exciting for us to be recognized uh, at our recent district meeting. So thank you, Dr. Lada. Uh, we'll move on to something near and dear to my heart, um, and that is the Nine School Tools Program. Just want to share some of the numbers with you. Bring it up. And I will say that every one of our board members participated with this activity as well. So I sincerely appreciate that. Uh, the goal, and this is our second year that we've, uh, I'll say, done a, a full community organization on this, um, to support by collecting school supplies for students and teachers. Our goal was to uh, increase over the 20,333 items that we set a record for our county uh, with last year. And with county, I, I mean Kannapolis City Schools and Cabarrus County Schools. Some of our community partners are listed here. We did actually gain a second corporate sponsor this year with Shomar's moving into the Afton Ridge Shopping Center. So that was nice. Uh, we also had some additions uh, on the faith community um, with having three churches this year uh, and Atrium Health joined us as well. And then we had the local businesses, some of who I have the asterisk there for those who uh, were in their second year of partnership with us. So that was very exciting. So just a few photos, and I want to specifically call out the Mount Pleasant High School Awesome Club, uh, who came to the Walmart at Concord Commons and helped us collect and organize and put things on the bus and do everything we needed them to do. They were just great, uh, friendly volunteers, even caring. If you think that box in the middle is not heavy, you're wrong. That was probably close to 100 pounds. Uh, the West Cabarrus YMCA also joined us, and they actually, uh, we had a Cabarrus County school bus at the uh, first Walmart, and at the second, we had the uh, West Cabarrus Y uh, bus helping us there. And to our facilities department, I know I've said this before, uh, but want to thank them again. Uh, we had the use of a mobile unit that wasn't needed until after Labor Day, uh, so we literally filled every corner, and you can see all the barrels and boxes that were returned at the end of the program. We also had uh, assistance from, in the left photo there, two of the members of the Communities and Schools teaching staff at the Performance Learning Center in Royal Oaks, right, Dr. Lada? Is that where they are, Mindy and Meredith? Yes. Or Rindy and Meredith. Um, and then just something that was kind of interesting, we were approached by uh, the Cabarrus County Queens, uh, one of the parents, and said they would like to collect school supplies. And one of the young ladies is one of our students at Harrisburg Elementary, and she came over and helped as well. So it was fun to have the kids there. And then the board members. <laughs> I didn't have photos of everyone, but I've got a few in here. Uh, so Barry was uh, with a hand truck in his hands there and Holly carrying out of the mobile unit, Carolyn delivering to Concord Middle School. And then Carolyn, what, what school was that? That one is uh, oh, uh, the Pitt School. Oh, Pitt, Pitt School, Pitt, I couldn't tell. Pitt School uh, Elementary. And Rob delivering to Concord Mills with his sons and Dr. Auerbach, and then Barry just telling me, good job. <laughs> <laughs> so by the numbers, which was pretty impressive, we thought we were getting close to 30,000, 
and I didn't really know until we took all of the individual school tally sheets and collected it, but we got uh, almost 50% more this year, so 30,180 items, which was pretty amazing. And then just some of the breakdown, when you think about how many things make up 30,000, uh, we had 14,000 pencils which was pretty amazing. And that wasn't counting the mechanical pencils, that was just wooden pencils. Um, and you can see the other numbers there. So um, we feel like we helped a lot of kids. The schools were excited to receive the supplies. Um, and we just like to thank uh, the community for all of their help. We had assistance from our staff here, Mindy and Sarah as well. So thank you. And then of course the board members. So we appreciate you participating. And I should mention that the driving uh, agency, if you will, as far as the sponsorship with Channel 9 is the Concord Afton Sunset Rotary Club, of which Mrs. Grimsley and I are members. Uh, and we actually had the Concord Rotary Club that helped us as well. So um, everybody's been asking me what number are we going for next year, and I have said 35,000, so help us break that. <laughs> Do you have a date for next year? Uh, no, it'll, it'll roughly be the first three weeks of August. Um, this year, Channel 9 let us go on our, what schedule we wanted to go on because different schools were starting earlier so we just pretty much went from the last Wednesday in July for three weeks and that's what we declared our official collection point was uh, and then we picked up all the barrels from Walmart and whatnot but it was pretty exciting so thank you all and I hope it helped the schools a bit so I, I just want to say people were just so generous I know work in Walmart when customers mm -hmm. were coming in we were handing out uh, the brochures people were just mm -hmm. so generous when they come back out and it was a lot of fun I really enjoyed you know doing it and and people were they were just happy to give and yeah. it, it was it was a lot of fun to do yeah. it and thank you for the hours you put in personally and a lot of other folks I mean there was weekends that I call you and there you were <laughs> And doing inventories and stacking and sorting, so we really yep. appreciate the work. There. You're welcome. You just about lived there, didn't you? No, this, I did, this for about so six weeks. Thank you, thank you for yes, your dedication. It was fun. The the end result, when I saw that spreadsheet tallying up and we were over 30,000, I thought I was going to jump out of my shoes. <laughs> so, but thank you all. Okay, we'll move to the next agenda item. And we have some guests here. Is Donna here? Yes. Okay. Is. Hey. And it's Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. Do you want to join us? So we have kind of a good news announcement tonight about a synthetic turf project. So welcome, Carpenter. And Rodney Harris, the new deputy county manager. And I don't know the gentleman behind him. And I also him. have John Poole with me, who is our senior vice president of sales and services. Uh, turn your mic, turn your mic oh, yeah. there, you go. there we go. John Poole, our Senior Vice President of Sales and Services at the CDB. That's a lot. Well, we do. We would like to actually um, kind of have a little bit of a conversation that we've been working on a collaboration um, with the county as well as Dr. Lauder and his team um, to talk about um, how can we as tourism uh, officials and using tourism dollars uh, be able to have a joint venture that helps both of us. As some of you may well or may not know, um, our tax dollars are collected. It's not paid by any local citizens. They are taxes that are paid by visitors who spend the night in our hotels. And that tax is levied by the county and then remitted by legislation to the CVB. Those dollars are only allowed to be spent on tourism related items. So. That's why this is the first time you have ever seen us here. Um, we're very fortunate that we do have dedicated funding. And I would dare say that this is probably the first project of its kind um, that I'm aware of where tourism has actually collaborated with the county as well as the school system. And we can thank a, an events rights holder who came here last year and approached us um, and it's, um, what was the name of the Diamond Sports, yep, Diamond Sports Group and it was their summer shine tournament and they bring athletes youth athletes um, from across the US to come and play uh, youth football so 
But what makes them different than most event rights holders is they like to use high schools. They don't like to have their competitions in a large complex. Um, so they want each of those athletes to be able to experience playing the game in a stadium atmosphere and not just on a, a multi-purpose turf field. So with that, um, we only had one school that we were able to utilize and it was still pretty far out for us and that was Central Cabarrus and they used Charlotte schools, um, the rest of the schools to do their event last year. And so we kind of made um, a commitment to him and said, you know what, if you will bring your tournament here permanently, we will go sit down with the county and the school district and see if they would be willing to let us help um, turf some some football fields, some of the high schools that are close proximity to the hotels that they would be willing to utilize. Fortunately, West Cabarrus was already being done, so that was one. And the other two high schools closest to Concord Mills Boulevard are Cox Mill and J.M. Robinson. So we proposed that we work in conjunction. The county retains a 5% um, amount of the occupancy tax for sports development and we've worked in the past together on what to spend those dollars on and we've used them for various things of lighting fields and um, building restrooms at some facilities, park facilities. Um, but this one made sense and it's been sitting there for a little while because we knew kind of what we wanted to do, that we wanted to do some turf fields, multi-purpose fields with it, but at the time we didn't know they would be high school fields. So luckily there's some money sitting there and our board um, was very excited about this collaboration because it was an opportunity for us to also give back to our community which we normally don't get to do very often. So with that said, um, we would like to propose that we pay for the um, turfing of Cox Mill and J.M. Robinson High School. And John, do you want to add anything to that? Not, not really. The, the opportunity for a sales uh, and services uh, team, it, it, first of all, it's very exciting to open a new market segment that we really haven't gone after because we didn't really have turf fields to be able to um, furnish for these uh, opportunities. I've just returned from two um, trade shows that are dedicated to, uh, to the sports market and that market exists. And the, the opportunity for us now is to get in front of those rights holders now so we can actually fill them when they're completed. And it's, it's also an opportunity for those, um, the PTOs in the schools and the school district itself to be able to make a little bit of revenue um, for either parking or concessions or whatever it may be that they can negotiate um, with these event rights holders that want to utilize the facilities. So with that said, I'll turn it just, for you. And I was, Donna has done an excellent job of summing up where we are. <laughs> Uh, so I will do just a brief uh, summary of where we're going from here. So next steps. Um, so we have a working group of staff that's been put together to work on this project, and that is Tim Lauder, Brian Cohn, and Brian Schultz from Cabarrus County Schools. Uh, myself, Jonathan Marshall, the other deputy county manager and the county manager for Cabarrus County, and then Donna and John Mills from the CVB. Uh, given the goal of having these fields up and running by early 2020, uh, it was an aggressive timeline, and so going through a typical procurement process was not going to be possible. And so what we were able to do is identify a cooperative purchasing agreement. These are contract awards uh, that are available through usually national groups that are competitively bid, and we're able to use those under state law without going through a formal process. And so what we are going to do is move forward with a vendor that you all have had experience working with, uh, Medallion and they have installed some fields for you already and we will contract with them for these two fields and then hopefully additional fields down the down the line um, the contract for these fields will not require action by this board uh, or our board because of the way we're going to be awarding it uh, the first step in the project will be site surveys that will be followed by design work and then obviously the field installation that hopefully would occur between december and march is the goal uh, at the same time, the school system and the CVB would need to work on a joint use agreement that would outline their ability to use the fields, blackout dates, et cetera. Uh, our attorney, Rich Cook, will be helping with that part of the process. 
So any questions? Can I just say one thing before questions? <clears throat> so we have been working on this for a couple of months and just want to say how great Donna and John have been, um, people from the county, Rodney, um, Jonathan, and Mike Down. So as they've tried to really um, create a, something that's hugely beneficial to the school system, they've also been willing to kind of um, be flexible with that to make it maximum uh, benefit for us and for them. And so it's just been a, a great um, partnership and them willing to listen to it. And certainly it's a great thing for the school systems. We just want to say how much we appreciate all the work you guys have done for this and kind of the forward thinking that ultimately helps us. So thank you for that. You're welcome. It's been our pleasure. What's the dollar amount for these fields? We are still waiting for that exact number and that some of that's going to be based on the survey and design work about what the cost will be. Uh, we currently have available 1.7 million. That's what is available. So you think to you can get spent. both done for the 1.7 million? Uh, we believe so. And yes. is it a CDB funds or? CDB yes. tourism funds, yes. Um, I guess Mr. Tyson's not here, but what is our experience with the current field at, at uh, Central, I mean, as far as maintenance or? Yes, yeah, so Mr. Tyson, experience? I should have thanked him too. He's been a part of all these meetings, and so have, as, as Rodney mentioned, um, Tim and the two Bryans um, have been a part of that. Really three Bryans when we include Tyson, right? So um, Brian has been a part of all the meetings and, and making sure that it kind of works with our athletic directors and their feedback. So all is good there. And I think um, Brian certainly, Brian Tyson's first preference is medallion and our guys agree with that too. So it's been, been a good situation. Okay, um, and then when do we get to approve this? I mean, it looks, yeah, like, a, it looks like a win-win situation. But I think, I mean, as far we as- We don't get, need to approve it. Can we get our attorneys? Point of view, it is they are modifying our field, and it is 1.7 million of some other funds that are, is not school system. Yeah, um, Mr. Walter raised this question with me just before the meeting, and I didn't get a chance to look at it in great depth. But a, a first cut looks like alteration of board property would require board approval. Uh, I'd be interested in hearing if there's a practice or something that's been established not to do that, but. That was my. I mean, I think it's it'd be good that we support this project and we approve it. It is our our fields. So I yeah, would I'm think guessing that I would Cox Mill is still the county's fields. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I would like to see it on our agenda to <laughs> yeah. approve. Well, we'll find out if we need to approve it. We don't believe there's any action needed, but we'll find out. Okay, and what basis is that? Just where, where is that coming from? It's not our funds, and ultimately, anything that is in the board's name. For right of first refusal goes back to the county, so the county is really the sponsor of those school properties. <coughs> Mr. Shoemaker? Yeah. First off, I really appreciate y'all coming forward with this. In 2013-14, uh, they came forward from Central with the idea of turf fields, and we kind of went out on a limb, and Medallion actually gave us a field at a really, really good price. and. Um, that was like the first experiment to getting turf fields in Cabarrus County, and we and we were so excited about the opportunity. And now this is is, I think, really good for our whole county, for our for our um, booster clubs, and and giving us a little bit more of a spot on the map, and giving us a little bit of ownership of what's going on around around the community, as well. So I think this is a great opportunity, and <coughs> I know that there's going to be the, a big o MOU that's going to have to come out to make sure that we have a good beneficial occupancy process, but. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, and uh, I really hope for you the best as you go forward with Medallion and, and working through this agreement. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I also want to thank you. When I first heard about it, I thought it was just a fantastic collaborative agreement. Um, and the part I like, which I'm sure you all have already well thought about this, is that it brings more folks into Cabarrus County to help increase the revenues from regular sales tax at Concord Mills, restaurants, whatever. Um, and then that will help your bottom line, Rodney. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> are y'all saying free? Yeah. I'm sorry? For, I know you didn't use the word free, but... Well, you, you can you thank all those visitors that everyone yes, complains about. Yes, I sure can, yeah. and I'll be happy to thank <laughs> they everyone. They are the ones that are paying for and, this. <laughs> and, and with Miss Donna Carpenter uh, uh, in the group of decision makers, I'm sure it'll all happen just right. And, and <laughs> well, thank you, thank for you your, very much for, for your everything. confidence. <laughs> um, I do remember that when we had discussions in... 2013 and uh, that, that time period for the Central Cabarrus um, turf project that we did, um, there was discussion about how long a turf 
is good, how long it lasts. And I'm not sure, I, got, I have 10 or 12 years in my head as the period of time during which a turf is usable until it has to be replaced. And I just hope that in whatever our long-term agreements are that we'll work that out to make sure that we have um, some process that sustains um, but I think it was 15. I was going to say, I recall from a recent meeting, and I think Brian is here somewhere, it was 15 years if properly maintained. And right. then it's, it's, it's not expected. completely, you don't have to completely replace yeah. it. It's just the top part of it. I'm, that is very layman speak, but yeah. because that I'm sure, is how I'm sure, I understand it. Because you said one of your uh, <laughs> sports uh, groups wanted to have a permanent agreement with you, so we'd like to have some permanent uh, turf that we could... Um, well, the minute we, um, we actually... You told one of the event, event rights holders about this. He connected us with another event rights holder um, that is talking about flag football. So John is on that one and um, getting ready to have a conversation with him. It's gonna open us up uh, to a lot of different things that can be played on those fields other than football. And you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, you know, I have a, a grandson who's in sixth grade and he's a football player and the fact that he'll be able to play his his high school years on a field that's turf like other communities have i think it's just a it's exciting for me and i know it's exciting for those young athletes who attend cabarrus county schools and um, we're proud to be a part of it well I'm, I'm very grateful to you for the partnership and for the formalizing what we already know was a great relationship and this this is a good opportunity that thank I you. look forward to. I'm extremely Spot proud of you. Thank you. So first, I just want to say thank you. This is awesome. I would love to see more collaboration um, with the community and, and with the schools to be able to get the schools um, certain things that we would all love to be able to have um, in there. I just have a couple of questions about the maintenance of the turf. So um, once the turf is put in, is that something that will be maintained through you guys or do we pay for that and is it more expensive than what <laughs> yeah. normal like, uh, field updates up. are uh, sorry i no, had to okay. ask it's a good question yeah. <laughs> once it's installed uh, the school will actually maintain it but we actually will use our same funds we utilize now for all the fertilization and the mowing and that sort of thing which should be much less cost than we actually are spending now so it's a win-win we get a little more money to do other things at the Perfect. school, let them do that. Okay, okay good. That's what I wanted you to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, any other comments? I'm sure we'll be getting regular updates from the staff on the progress and uh, timing and all. So mm -hmm. Thank you all for joining us in short notice. Thank you. No we appreciate it. Uh, board members will now move on to the approval of minutes. We have the September 9th, I'm sorry, September 3rd work session and September 9th business meeting minutes. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, one minor correction on the September 9th minutes. I think you sent that in already, didn't you? I don't know if I did. Uh, page four or, five, four or five where it talks about uh, additional road improvements. So something like there was a there was not vote on the should be not a vote right okay keep in mind that any updates to minutes are due on friday so. okay do you have a motion to approve the minutes with that one change second mr harrison made the motion mr walter seconded any further discussion all in favor say aye, aye. any opposed okay the minutes are approved we'll now move on to uh the board chair and superintendent comments. Um, I just wanted to share with the community that with this being, uh, I believe it's a national bullying month or anti-bullying month, um, the board members have signed the anti-bullying pledge, uh, basically with the theme of being kind. Um, I know staff members signed it last week, maybe last Monday, um, and we signed that to join in uh, with the theme for our district for this month of October. And the second item to announce is that we have scheduled a joint meeting with the county commissioners at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 29th. It will be at the multi-purpose room uh, at the governmental center in downtown Concord. So there will be a series of uh, 
presentations, conversations, discussions. Um, and the theme will really be about what we need from capital over the coming years and what uh, the county uh, debt service and funding and whatnot. So uh, it will be somewhat of a lesson as well uh, to learn about different things because some of us have older ideas of how funding may have occurred uh, and the economy changes, interest rates are low. So there's new information that we want to make sure everyone's aware of. So again, that's October 29th, a Tuesday night at 6 p.m. at the Governmental Center. Dr. Lauder. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd just like to once again say congratulations to Jennifer Brinson, our Principal of the Year, and Rick Money, our Assistant Principal of the Year. They're both very deserving of this recognition, and we know that they will represent us well as they move into the next phases of the competitions. This month, as Ms. Furtenbaugh said, we're observing National Bullying Prevention Month with activities in the schools and the central office. Students and staff have signed pledges to stomp out bullying and to show kindness to others. You can search the hashtag CCSBKind2019 to see photos of all the activities. Applications for our program choice options are now available. Parents and students attended our annual program choice fair on October 8th to meet representatives from the 30 schools in our district that offer some form of specialized programming. You can apply for program choice now through December 19th. Visit our district website at www.cabarrus.k12.nc.us to learn more. Information about our new elementary, middle, and high school attendance boundaries for the 2020-2021 school year is now available on our realignment website at www.cabarrus.k12.nc.us slash realignment. School assignments for many students will change as a result of these new boundaries. The site includes an interactive Find My School map and questions and answers to help you understand the impact realignment may have on your child's school assignment for next year. Congratulations to Tara Anthony, the exceptional children's teacher at Beverly Hills STEM Elementary School on her selection as the EC Educator of Excellence for Cabarrus County Schools. Ms. Anthony will be honored at a ceremony during the North Carolina Council for Exceptional Children Annual Conference in Greensboro, which is in November. Congratulations also to our school nutrition department for securing a fresh fruits and vegetables grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Students at Royal Oaks, W.M. Irvin, and Wolf Meadow Elementary Schools can enjoy a fruit or vegetable snack three to five days per week thanks to the federally funded program. The district will receive approximately $76,000 in federal funding via this program, which seeks to introduce children to fresh fruits and vegetables to include new and different varieties and to increase overall acceptance and consumption of fresh unprocessed produce among children. Cabarrus County Schools has installed live streaming cameras in the stadiums and the gymnasiums of all seven traditional high schools. The live streaming service will provide student athletes, coaches, and families with digital access to hundreds of football, basketball, soccer, and volleyball games throughout the year. Now friends and family who are not able to attend an event can watch live from any device. Annual subscriptions are offered through the National Amateur Sports and can, and can be purchased for $70 at www.cabarriscountyathletics.com. With each subscription purchased, CCS receives 30% of that back to help grow and enhance the athletic programs. We want to say thank you to Subaru of Concord and its customers for science book donations to Bethel Elementary School. The book donation is part of the Subaru Loves Learning Initiative in partnership with the American Association for the Advancement of Science. The dealership also presented Principal Julie Barbie with a $1,000 Staples gift card. Lastly, I'd like to highlight a few important dates for your calendar. Um, this Saturday on October 19th, all county chorus will perform at 4 o'clock at Hickory Ridge High School. October 23rd is the annual King of the Court Volleyball Tournament. This popular fundraiser includes students from each of our high schools and other high schools throughout the county. This year's event will be held at Cox Mill High School. October 25th marks the end of the first quarter for this school year. October 28th is a staff development day, which means there'll be no school for students. And November 5th is also election day and a day that we do not come to school. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ladder. Uh, we'll now move into our guest speakers. I have one person who signed up ahead of time. Uh, in accordance with board policy 2310, a part of each business meeting will be set aside for citizens to address the board through public comment. Each speaker will receive three minutes to present con comments, and sign-up must occur at be no later than the start of the normal business meeting. Uh, speakers must complete a contact card. Generally, personnel, confidential, and specific school-level matters will be handled in accordance with the board's grievance policy and or the appeal rights afforded under the North Carolina General Statutes and are not the proper subject of the public comment portion of the board meeting. 
board members will not respond to individuals who address the board except to request clarification of points made by the presenter. So we have one speaker, and it's, uh, apologize if I say this incorrectly, Natika McPherson. Yes, Natika. Mm -hmm. You can come up here. And there will be three, there's three minutes on the clock, and you'll hear the beep when it's, what, 20 seconds, Mindy, to go. That's fine. Good evening, everyone. Um, as she stated, my name is Natika McPherson. I am here with a question, concern, I guess, for the students overall in Cabarrus County School System. Um, my question is, I was glad to be here. I will admit this is my first time being at a board meeting. It is very informative, probably won't be my last. I appreciate the way you acknowledge those who do well. My question is, how do we hold accountable those who we have concerns about? Um, such as principals. Um, how do we allow our parents to be able to, when you have teachers that you have differences with, their mediators such as counselors, such as a principal, but when you have a principal that there's an issue with, there is no such mediator. I'm speaking on this issue for myself because I've been in Cabarrus County School this month, tomorrow for one year. I had been having issues for uh, three months prior to um, anything being able to be done using phone calls, emails, personal visits here to this building um, without any help, which led to me two months later being arrested. Um, and I just want to know, you know, when I went to court, things were thrown out. The judge is saying to me, you know, the school is going to be upset with me, but this is ridiculous and I've not received. I see very familiar names, people who know what's going on. But overall, in general, how do we hold our principals accountable when there could be questions? We don't respond during this session. Okay. So I'm guessing you've contacted the school before? I have contacted the school. I have contacted the district. I have contacted the board. And without any response, my assumption was that if I showed my face, maybe someone would respond because I haven't received any response. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Do you have anything else to say? That's it. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, board members will now move on to the action agenda and policy 2500 hearings before the board. And this is the final copy, Mindy? That's being pulled up? Okay. Good evening, board. Madam Good Chair. Um, I know Mr. Shaw and Ms. Furtmall have been working on the language um, for the hearings before the board as this was a board requested revision. So what did we change between this week and last? Just a review. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? What did we change between this week and last week? Uh, and I, well, you want to say, or I, I can say what I know. Well, you can add on to what I say. <laughs> so I know we, we added for current member, current student, and or current employee um, in section one, and then section seven was a new section to the policy. And I just, as I commented last week, I thought it had some redundant wording. Mm -hmm. And so Brian has kind of uh, stricken it out now um, and clarified it so it's more concise. So. In paragraph seven, uh, we took out the third sentence, uh, which was felt to be redundant. Uh, but I thought that the two full work days provision was still necessary because if there's going to be an attorney present, we have to have some time to prepare for that and get a board attorney if necessary. So I added in blue uh, on the first sentence at least two full work days advance notice if there's going to be an attorney or advocate. I tried to wordsmith it basically to accomplish <laughs> what I needed in the third sentence without having all the other aspects of the third right. sentence. Right. Yeah, I just thought it got confusing with the non-party party stuff. So. I think everything else is the same as we saw it last week. Yes. Ms. Romer, um, can I ask a question? Does a policy change such as this um, uh, mean that communications to parents and people who would uh, ask for a hearing will specify the two days notice for the attorney? I mean, are you going to update the administrative uh, guidelines and the do documentations that uh, from here forward, if we vote, um, in the affirmative, um, how are we going to improve the communication we have to the parents and the uh, other people who might um, appeal so that they know to get all this stuff uh, in, in line? Yes. So when they uh, contact Ms. Abbott for an appeal, they'll go through Mr. Shaw as well, and that language will be added to 
the contact information when they request a board appeal. It'll be in the official documents yes, to sir. the appeal, uh, appealing parties uh, for uh, two-day notice for attorneys and the other particulars yes, of this policy. Yes, sir. Thank you. And the permission one, too. Can you speak up, sir? And the permission as well. What permission? Can you see where you're referring to? It says non-family witnesses or observers are generally not permitted to attend a closed session hearing unless advanced permission is obtained from the administration or the board. So the guidance on what it takes to get permission. Is it just notice? Well, that needs permission. We've had some hearings where there were people who showed up that really weren't, they didn't have the grievance, they weren't direct family members. <coughs> and we didn't know about it. That's and we didn't know about it. And so if, if people are going to bring, if a party wants to bring somebody like that, we should let us know and get advance permission. Now, there's no requirement here for advance, per, for permission on an attorney or advocate they are allowed to have an attorney or advocate. It's just that let's give us two days notice so we can be prepared. But they do not need our permission to bring an attorney or advocate. Mm -hmm. It's just notice. And if, if there is, I'll just say as a practice, certainly if an attorney is involved, the attorney's name is mentioned, then uh, Sue or Lynn or whoever's handling it will pass it on to me to do the communication with the attorney and they'll be aware of this policy. And sometimes they, the attorney cannot make the specified date. Sometimes if they give only a day's notice or so, we could not make the date. And we worked that out with the attorneys and, and of course, Cindy uh, to help schedule that. Okay, any other questions, discussion board members? I'll take a motion to approve on the first reading. Second. Mr. Harrison made the motion. Mr. Walter made the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so 2500 is done. Next, we have 4150. Yes, ma'am, I think uh, we sent you guys an email from Ms. Shemansky this week explaining uh, a little more detail about the request to change by staff due to our program choice and academies. Appreciate that. Did we get any comments from public or anything? No, sir. No. Hey, I think it's good, a good detailed clarification. So any questions, discussion board? Mr. Harrison? Okay. okay. I'll take a motion that we approve 4150 school assignment transfers and program choice enrollment on the first reading. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Shoemaker made the motion. Mr. Harrison made the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes on first reading. 6-0. And next we have, thank you, Ms. Burns. Next we have the um, 2021 academic calendar. And you have a copy of it at your place. <laughs> yes, ma'am. There were uh, several questions from both board members as well as our uh, teacher of the year uh, liaison. Um, and so we provided the board just a couple of options that you may want to look at as far as um, adding teacher work days or, or, or moving things around a little bit. So hopefully uh, you have the information in front of you to, to make a decision. So I just want to clarify one thing. In the email you sent today, TWD was teacher work days, right? Yes, I was, sir. I was, really, I was really like, <laughs> okay, I think that's what she means. <laughs> yes, sir, it is. Well, I personally like the happy middle of having one teacher work day. I would suggest about this time of the year because there are some employers who have off Columbus Day, especially if the, the spouse is involved in financial activities. So something around this, this time of year. Um, I think the trade-off for the teacher morale is uh, valuable. So, Ms. Highsmith? <laughs> Yes, so I did send a couple of questions on behalf of other teachers to um, Mr. Shoemaker and to um, Dr. Louder, who sent it to Ms. Reimer, both of which responded um, with reasonable responses. And so, yeah, I do think that that long length of time that was on the drafted schedule that didn't have 
um, a teacher work date in October could potentially um, be a challenge for staff and for students. And so I think the additional work day provides flexibility for professional development, um, other things that we have identified as important for our staff and students. Mr. Shoemaker? Well, I, and I know that we talked about, so I, I sent another question to Ms. Reimer and Dr. Lauder and actually Cindy about possibly adding three minutes to the day as a way if, if we were concerned about not having enough days because of weather and you know and so for the first semester maybe extending the day by three minutes to build up enough hours which will give you eight eight point eight hours which will be more than enough hours to accommodate that day off but you know at the same time it's no need to extend the school day and make two different semesters um, but I wanted, I wanted to at least look at that as an option. Do you think that that's a viable option if, or do you think that this, the options that you laid out to us in the email are doable for <laughs> staff and that y'all could live with those options without adding any other time to the school day? Yes, sir. So um, in working with Mr. Fell, we have updated all of our bell schedules uh, to the minute and then reworked all the hours that every school and every level have and feel very comfortable that if you were to add that back in, we would not need to add any minutes to the day. Uh, still have enough days to forgive for inclement weather uh, and hopefully maintain enough student days as well. And so if we should have a, uh, and I'm sorry to butt in like this. No, you're fine. If we should have a, an unfortunate weather event, you know, we've, we've over the last few, few years had some interesting weather. Um, we, we haven't been impacted as badly as some of our Eastern counterparts, but. Uh, we could make an adjustment to our schedules if we had to and not have to do Saturday classes and those types of things to extend the school year. Thus, you know, I think once you did add three minutes to the day to try to pick up some extra time. So That's that would correct. be an option that we that could, would be an option we, we we we'd have in our back pocket to help us reach the hours that we need without having to force school to be on Saturdays and that type of thing in, this, in the fall. I'm thinking mainly the fall. I think the winter we've got... Uh, winter, spring, I think we've got that pretty close. Yes, you are correct. We would, we would be able to do that. Board members, what's your pleasure? I make a motion that we, uh, we add an additional day, our teacher work day, to um, October the 5th or 12th. I'm really not hung up on any specific I was going to suggest the 12th because I think that's Columbus Day. Okay. So families are looking at potentially the other parent being off. So I'll make my motion October the 12th. We have a teacher work day. That gives us a Monday and a, and a weekend, a three-day weekend to work with. I'd be delighted to second that. It would break up the 39-day nonstop teaching uh, schedule as it appears on paper. The, uh, ex the extra day on October the 12th would be an excellent addition, if that could be fitted in, please. We have a motion and a second. Board members, additional discussion? We're already taking five days away because of the RNC. I don't think we need to take another day away from our students. I think having them in the classroom is, is more important, um, especially if you're not adding hours. Yeah, and I, I will suggest, as I've uh, also talked to Ms. Reimer before about this, that if we have rested uh, and high morale teachers because they know they have that one long weekend, that makes for a more effective classroom. I think that's very valuable. So we are removing five more days, just so you know. We're, we have... Uh, it, says, it says 175 days, is that correct? Yeah. So okay. typically you would go for 180 days, is that right? No, that is not not in the last five years we have not done. The last four years we have not done that. Right, but the state would like you to go 180 days. No, the state asks you to choose 100. either out the state asks you to choose either hours or days, and we choose hours. In the email I sent you today, the hours that they expect us to go to school are 1,025 per level. Or 180 days. And if you look at the or column, the or the 180 days, right? Yeah, so we okay. could go 180 days and have less hours if you it's, choose that. But yeah. it's actually 185 though, isn't it? it if you it choose is, days, yes. it's actually that. So that's. I don't know of any school district that, that follows days and that because they either made it 185 or hours, so that's why we choose that. 
Okay, and right now on the chart you provided to us, uh, if we add one teacher work day in first semester, we still have five extra days of hours. It's also pretty typical, right? Like that's that's about where we usually land. The public may not appreciate this, but it's a testament to how y'all are getting down almost to the nanosecond uh, and being in the, uh, in compliance with state regulations. But you're making it work. I would also like to say our principals are doing a fantastic job, and they really are um, involved in instructional hours and time, and so they they make they make this work. Okay, ready for a vote? All in favor uh, of adding one teacher work day to the calendar presented on October 12th? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. Carol? Uh, I think they do need, I'll, I'll agree with it. Okay, so the motion passes 5-1. Thank you. And then we'll move on to the Wolf Meadow calendar. We have not had any, any feedback on this calendar or early college. Both of them seem to be without controversy at this point. I move approval. Okay, Mr. Walter made the motion. Mr. Harrison seconded. Any questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. And lastly, we'll go to the early college calendar which we'd really like to transform to <laughs> our regular schools. I make a motion we approve the early college calendar as laid out in board docs. Second. Okay, I do have one question on this. So the community college is not going to do anything with the end of August? Not that we're aware of it this time. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Shoemaker, a second by Ms. Blackwell. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes 6-0. Ms. Reimer, don't you want to stay up here? <laughs> well, this does not look like Dr. Roth. This looks like Mr. <laughs> I, not quite the improvement you expected, Mr. but I'm back. <laughs> This looks like Mr. Fail. <laughs> School improvement plans. Yes. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. Can you talk to me about what you mentioned earlier, how you do the co coaching of the? Um, so one of the things that Rob mentioned before the board meeting was just the, the variations between the plans. You have some exemplars and you have some that um, so probably need some improvement over the years we have um, embarked on this new process. Our level directors will meet with the um, principals and leadership teams regularly throughout the year and provide coaching. So as the year continues, um, these plans are living, breathing, and will continue to be edited and, and improved throughout the year and changed if necessary. And I want to give a big thank you for giving us a much more readable format than logging into every <laughs> school improvement plan and being able to read it in the contiguous page. Well, this is actually one of the times you could actually thank DPI because they listened to us and gave us that option, um, awesome. which they did about, I guess, a week a week prior. And when you asked, yeah. we, uh, Sarah dug a little bit and found out that option was there. So we that's were for our benefit. The, the, pu the public itself, or the public, want, if somebody from the public wants to see one of these plans, so how are they do that? the public would log in through the guest username and log in. As soon as you guys approve the plans, then tomorrow I'll send an email to all the schools saying your plans have been approved. Please post the link and the user um, guest username and logins on your web pages. So there's a, there's a unique so login and a unique password for each school. Yes. Okay. So first off, um, thank you, Raleigh, uh, for uh, allowing us this opportunity. <laughs> I hope it's yeah. been an easy, That's certainly not easy, but a, but a good transition yeah. to a better um, uh, arrangement. And it, I'm probably underestimating, but I think at least 200 people were involved in all of these uh, school oh. improvement plan, maybe more, I'm sure more, more than, than that. that. Probably more than that, yeah. Right. So, but again, it, great thanks to um, all the staff and uh, people involved uh, in 
making this transition as well as maintaining it and carrying it forward. Thank you. I know they'll appreciate that. Yeah. And I'm anxious to hear later in the school year, perhaps next summer, how the format helped or hindered, you know, just kind of as you're learning with the format. Because the old ones, you know, you get used to them. You know exactly where to go, what you want to see, That's right, yeah. how far back in the document it is. And this is still almost speaking a new language. It is, yes. So. Okay, I will take a motion to approve the school improvement plans as presented. Second. Is that Mr. Harrison? Yes. And Mr. Walter made the second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Thank you, sir. And we have board member training credit. This is getting to be a habit, Ms. Carpenter. Ms. Ferton, I'll make a motion that we approve these 32 hours. I'll Thanks. second, but would you mind uh, giving us a little summary of what that conference is about? Well, uh, it was very informative. Turn, turn, turn on okay. uh, very informative. We, we learned quite a bit. I think one of the things that one of the, well, we attended many classes, but I think one of the things, uh, one of the ones that I was real enlightened by was talking about children and how much time they spend in front of video games. And one thing that I, they showed us that I was not aware of, how many of you have seen Grand Theft Auto? Mm -hmm. uh, and most people think that Grand Theft Auto is just about racing. Well, it's not. No. When no. you go on there, you can pick up a prostitute. You can uh, do many, many things on it. And most most parents don't know that. Mm -hmm. You get extra points for it. Then if you murder that prostitute, you get extra points. But that game also teaches you to shoot a woman or a policeman. You get extra points for that. I mean, it's a very, very graphic. And most parents don't know that. That bank game can be bought at Walmarts, at Target. And they were talking about these children that are doing shootings and things like that. This violence comes from these video games and that parents need to be really looking at things like that and that these video games that they think that are very not not violent or just you know just playing video games that parents need to be more involved and they need to be looking at these things and these children or these people that are doing these violent crimes that these children are watching these video games like 12 hours a day and that and this was one of the things and this video game has a mod on it and it was called uh, Colin Bond Mod and it can be added to this video game and that it, it shows a, a school shooting and it shows the different uh, different weapons that can be done and everything but most parents do not know these things and so we have to look at these video games that our children are watching. And this was just one of the classes we did. And another thing that we had, we actually got to interview serial killers that were in prison. These people were actually in prison. And we got to, they interviewed these guys. These guys called us from prison and we got to have discussions with them why they had did the things they they did and we actually talked to them from prison and got to ask them questions why they did the things they did and uh but then we had other uh things they were talking about uh where we could get grant money uh and uh tell they said that uh you know where we could get grant that grant money were available from different different uh from the the feds and that we could apply for it uh but it was very enlightening <coughs> that uh, most people think that these mass shootings are from these automatic weapons it's not most of them are from handguns uh but it was very very informative but again we we need to see what our children are doing and that's something that parents need to be aware of thank you Ms. carpenter so we have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving the board training credits? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Ms. Carpenter, your credits are on their way. Thank you. <laughs> and now we'll talk about uh, agenda item 9.08, the voting delegates for the NCSBA annual convention. <laughs> we have, I believe it is four spots 
that we can, um, based on the size of our district. So Ms. Carpenter, I realize you were not here last week, but we had um, six possible names. So Mrs. M Mrs. Grimsley backed out and said she won't vote. She's going, but she won't vote. Uh, and we had a lot of interest in it. So I hope you're okay with being an alternate this year. That's fine. Mm -hmm. if, if other people want to do it, I'm going to be there all week. But if yeah. something changes, I'll be there all yeah. week. Yeah, and if anybody cannot vote, then you'll be given the voting rights. Okay, so. that's fine. That's fine. Okay, I will take a motion that we approve the alternates as listed on the document. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harrison made the motion. Do I have a second? second. <laughs> Ms. Blackwell made the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And that's for our conference in November. And next we'll move on to the capital improvement plan project plan uh, and this was from our work session last week where we um, worked in small groups then came together and renegotiated and moved things around <laughs> so welcome mr schultz thank you madam chair members of the board uh, dr ladder thank you for allowing me once again to be in front of you uh, <laughs> to talk about the capital plan sequencing uh, first off i'd just like to really tip my hat to all of you for the great collaborative work you did last week. It was uh, um, exciting to hear the discussions and, and hear the uh, consensus that you came to. So I really appreciate your involvement in that and taking it very seriously as we work through that. Um, again, just a reminder, this is all in draft format and subject to change. Uh, wanted to remind you about the beliefs uh, that I heard and obtained from the discussions in August. So that was the prioritization of replacing uh, two aging downtown schools with the opportunity and capacity for growth. Uh, prioritization of the northwest section of Cabarrus County uh, due to the rapid growth that we're seeing there. And then lastly, the addition of Beverly Hills Elementary uh, to the capital plan as you voted on on August uh, 12th of 2019. And then as we look at the what the, what the final uh, rendition of it was, I did send that out to you all for uh, preview. Um, so we sequenced that on the, the big board at the end with the, the three groups reporting out and had the, the sequencing. So we came up with the following uh, sequence and, and be clear when I state that this is not project completion order, but order of priority. So I want to make sure that was uh, really clear going forward. And I'll just take, you know, let you take a moment to look through that. I won't read all of these off to you, um, but just noting the sequencing and what takes place in terms of the renovate, there's multiple renovations on here. So obviously to renovate a building and then move from another building into the renovated building uh, becomes a domino effect. And so we see that uh, starting one kind of domino chain with R Brown and a sequencing of renovations that comes from that. And then we also see that uh, similarly with a building of the replacement of Northwest Cabarrus High School and then a domino of events that takes place uh, through renovations uh, through the Northwest, the former Northwest Cabarrus High School, former Northwest Cabarrus Middle School, and then uh, ending with a uh, 900 seats for Northwest Cabarrus Elementary School. So with that, I'll uh, allow you a full few moments to uh, look at that. And then uh, Madam Chair, I'll turn that over to you for further action. Okay. Um, I just wanted to comment that <coughs> One thing I like about this plan now is that we're reusing properties we have. So as we have seats that where we can grow, we can start reusing. And after we get through uh, building one more high school, then we're really looking at a fraction of the cost um, for most of these schools to gain the seats. Um, and I think that's, I hope that will be interesting to the county commissioners when they look at what we're asking for over future years that we're asking for a fraction. So for example, when we look at renovating um, the old Northwest Cabarrus High School for a middle school at 25 million, as opposed to, I don't even know what the number is for the 52, 52 million. So really at la less than half the cost and to get growth seats. So get out of an older building and get the growth seats. So um, I'm very pleased with how, like I said, how the number potential looks and we may be done for a little while with spending really large dollars. So. And 
maybe just to reiterate what Ms. Furtenbaugh was saying, um, I wish we could, in a sales frame of mind, um, present some information to the commissioners um, that, in effect, we're saving money. I mean, uh, that's kind of obvious to us, but to renovate and revi uh, repurpose certain facilities, we're not spending the, the alternative the alternative of what would otherwise, otherwise have to be considered. When you get right down to it, we are saving the county considerable um, expenses that we can then put into the classroom and teacher supplements and things of that nature, I, I, I hope. But if you can ever pull that number together, I know it's somewhat speculative, but um, it would be interesting to me to know that instead of a full brand new facility, we are make, making do and being good stewards of the county's money. I think it's important to note also that um, while we have this priority list, um, and I think it's great that we have all those broken down into separate pieces now as opposed to the lines that had multiple items on one row. Um, as the county grows in one area or doesn't grow in another area, we'll continue to revisit this and see what is actually needed. Um, this is based on what we know last week and we heard about the increases in what schools rec at or over capacity and whatnot. So, um, but I really like, if you will, how we did this this time. And I hate that you weren't here, Ms. Carpenter, but um, it was a really good discussion. So. Other comments? Well, the only thing that, and I talked with you last night, Cindy, and one of the things, one of the concerns I have, again, is with the old Mary Frances Wall building. I, I still have some concerns with that, spending $15 million on that facility, that building. When I go around, our, go around Concord in this area and I see buildings that are sitting vacant in this area and they could be renovated for $15 million and, and us sticking $15 million in that, that facility, uh, which I know is not energy efficient. I know that it's got a boiler that needs to be redone. I know that it's not on the very best road. 601 is a disaster. Uh, it's not a safe highway to be going in and off of. Um, that property could be sold uh, and we could look at some other area. I know that we do own it, but still, I, I, I'm just not I would rather us get, you know, if we're going to move those children out and move them to the old R. Brown and get the children out of there, I would rather not see us, I'd rather see us get out of that facility completely and not have to deal with, uh, you know, you know, dealing with tearing down a facility or doing something else on it and putting $15 million in it. I'd rather see us go into a more updated facility and putting 15 million dollars into that um, or look, at least looking at that possibility instead of going out there and dumping 15 million dollars into that. And I think um, something important to note is that once we approve the sequence then Ms. Klutz will be preparing what the capital funding would need to occur in sequence um, and the county will advise of what's reasonable as far as the timing oh you're still there we won't put you on the spot today we'll wait for the 29th <laughs> Rodney will actually be doing a presentation on the county and debt service and how they evaluate and what they've evaluated and so on so he's on the agenda um, and that we're almost done with but. and 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 you all know how I feel about we we all said that we know where Beverly Hills everybody had said beforehand that that's an older school and it we know that it, it it's aged out and when we first started our discussion we had said it would go below Coulter and Webb and I still feel like it needs to so I've said my piece mm -hmm. 
And so that's what I said. Yeah. So. And when Ms. Carpenter and I talked last night, one of the things I said is the only certainty we know is that there will be funding at some point in time for our needs. We don't know when. And when we look at this, we already know the middle school. We have that land. Testing is proceeding in the, or the early stages of that construction. So when we look at this and we count down years, even in an aggressive schedule, we're still looking at, I'm going to say, probably seven years until we're done with Culture Web. So it's, it's fluid. So once we start a project, obviously we're not going to abandon the middle school now, so it's appropriate to be number one. And then we have a cycle of how students can flow and we can get growth seats with some of the early projects there. But I feel certain we always revisit that we'll revisit as conditions change and based on what we know and what projects we can start. So, And, and like I say, we know that, that uh, when Brown is built, we'll have those seats and get those children moved. So we know we're going to do some redistricting and open up some of those other seats. By then, we've, we've already said we've and and i know when we talked we said the cropper study is already not it's changed mm -hmm. you know they had said the population was going to go down we don't know what's going to happen right it, the crystal ball we we don't have it 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 and we don't know what's going to happen we've seen what's happened around us mm -hmm. and those have gone down so well, it could happen. It might not happen. And Dr. So. Lotta, you may know this, but we're one of the few districts in the state with continuous growth over many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually have a, um, that was a um, NCASA that we, I think, did we send those slides out? Of, if we didn't, we'll send them to you. That basically shows since um, 2010, I think, up through now, which counties were growing in 2010 and which ones are continued now. And it really is interesting. There's only about five counties, I think, and we were one of them. So we'll forward that to you. Um, but yeah, as a general rule, very, very few. It tends to be um, some counties around Raleigh, some counties where we are, although we're really one of the only ones growing considerably now, and then a little bit on the coast. So very few counties that have had continual growth than, that are in the range that we're at now with six or 700 students. So. And just as an example, um, when we did the nine school tools project, um, the way we determined what schools got, what I'll just simply say, the most supplies was at each grade level, we check the uh, SES percentage, the, the need percentage, and the size of the school. And Weddington Hills is our biggest, neediest elementary school. So and you'd probably concur, Kate. <laughs> um, so when we look at even without providing um, extra seats or growth on the, the more western side of the, t the county, um, we need to relieve Weddington Hills. So we need some of those downtown seats to relieve Weddington Hills. So, Okay, board members, any other discussion? I'd just like to make one thing. Mm -hmm. On the Mary Frances wall, it says renovation, but it's more like renovating the property, not the school itself. I believe we probably wouldn't use any any part of that. We would probably, there might be some infrastructure underneath, but for the most part, you would rebuild on the property. And not the newer part of. Well, there's not America much. As well? The one on the right new. when you turn in. And, I, and, and and Tim, you can come forward and and talk a little bit about it. But there's not a tremendous amount that you would reuse. You would probably re-engineer re the property to mm. to handle offices and that type of thing. Tim, yes. take it away. Newer is relative. It's, the newer is 25 years old now. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, yes, there is a portion of the building that could be salvaged. You know, it's 25 years old, got 25 years worth of life left in it. As, as Mr. Shoemaker says, it's more about the reuse of the property. I mean, we demo 90% of it, most likely. And we would not put a building that close to 601. No, ma'am. Do you remember when it got old, hit? Once the old one goes down then we have opportunities to be able to create better parking and better yeah. mobility plus we have development across the street right now plan for city of concord we're probably four lane 601 all the way to all the way to shore road mm -hmm. so it actually probably be a four lane section all the way through there yeah can we tweak a word or two to that effect here on the chart so that we don't have that um discussion i mean we're yeah. thank you Okay, any other comments? 
I'll take a motion to improve uh, the capital improvement plan sequencing as presented. So moved. And I'll second that. Mr. Harrison made the motion. Mr. Shoemaker made a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, that motion passes 5 1. And lastly, I believe, on the open session agenda, we will go to the operational cost savings for teacher supplements. Ms. Klutz, one more time. <laughs> I don't have anything new to say. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. I'm hoping you do. <laughs> okay, so if we leave the board expenses video recording, there, there was, you know, certainly interest in keeping that in. Um, we removed that 9600 but we keep the 655 which was a discount they're able to give us. Are you actually making it real time? Mm -hmm. I am. Oh, there you go. So that gives us $23,665, right? For what? What, what for do you have? Line item? Board. For the board's line items? Yeah, 5000 for the <coughs> meals, $655. Oh, and the workshop expense yeah, and the for video. The video yeah, twenty six fifty five, and then eighteen thousand for right board workshop yeah. expense, right? Mm -hmm. It's more than no, fifteen thousand. Right, that's a high 15, percentage. Yeah, that's fifteen thousand is is the proposal to reduce workshop for the board. Five thousand meals, six fifty five for video, which is a total of twenty thousand six fifty five. Mm -hmm. If we increased it to from fifteen thousand to eighteen thousand. Okay. Then we'll go to. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I'm comfortable with going okay. up that high. If we look at doing something like master board training or whatever, I don't want to kind of you know hide behind and say we'll find money elsewhere or whatever. I think we need to be open with what. So right now that leaves us at eleven thousand four hundred forty-six that we need to find. Okay, so, anybody got any cuts? We'll buy a few less computers. <laughs> he needed to be at the meeting the other night. I'm sorry, Mr. Walter, I did not hear. <laughs> buy 10 less computers or 5 less computers, whatever it is. Yeah. Unfortunately, that money is in a lease contract and we can't do that, so. County said we, they weren't going to allow us to. Yeah, they. Okay, then take it out of the fund balance. Uh, we, were, we were lectured last week by Mr. Shapiric about why you wouldn't want to do that. The re fund balance is not for recurring money. So, miss Mr. Walter, I now have the floor. Yeah. So, um, let's, let's talk about what we can do. There's still uh, another option that we have. Ms. Furtenbaugh, you weren't willing to go the extra 3000 for the board, um, uh, but there is an arts experience that uh, we spend $30,000 a year on, and we could cut that a little bit. Everyone's had to suffer. This is the only nonprofit that we actually give money to each year, and if, if you know, right now the, the school district has been very, very supportive of the Arts Council. We go to the to their breakfast, we help sponsor the breakfast, we help perform duties at the breakfast, and I think this is where our business community can get involved and help us in this in this reach. And uh, I, my suggestion is that we would cut uh, about 15% from the 30,000 that we spend, which would be about $4,500. It's not an extraordinary amount, and um, that would be part of the $11,400 that we have to do but I think what the, the conversation with with Noel and our partners is that you know this is where our business community can can help out with the Arts Council and help bridge the gap you know the Arts Council talks about how much they help children and all in, in every one of their Friday um, in those big Friday morning um, breakfasts that they have in the in, in May and and they show the benefits and we know that's there but 
our teachers come first, and I think at this point in time, we've really got a, this is a one-time type of thing. We've, we've been very generous to the Arts Council for many years, but I think at this point, that's one area that we probably need to make a, a small cut. And, and they have to feel the pain that we're feeling, but at the same time, I don't think they'll feel the pain. I think the businesses in the community will rise up and help out and because they understand why we're doing it. It's not like we're trying to cut the budget to do something non-altruistic. We're trying to help our teachers get a, get a raise, and I think that that's something that's, that's worth, worth looking at. Another thing that I'm thinking about looking at is increasing the amount on the um, utilities, another $4,000 to $23,000. That is a 0.39%. 39% um, of the of the content, uh, so do you the want current budget. Us to keep up with this. Yeah, so that would be. That's a twenty-three thousand. Be twenty-three thousand three hundred twenty-two, three hundred thirty-two. Twenty-three thirty-two. Uh huh. And when I looked at the utility costs over the past five years, and then I looked at them again over the last three years, um, the. Um, the amount of money that we're over, you know, we have a delta of the, during the uh, last three years, and in this year, our delta would have been only this cut would only be 10% of the delta, and um, in uh, last year's budget, it would have only been 8%. So it comes up to over the last three years about a 14% decrease in the delta that we've experienced as far as positive cash flow on on our on our budget for utilities, i.e. electrical and that type of thing. If you've noticed the last few years, last few years we've done well. So I think 23,000 is, is reasonable uh, for us to experience. It's not cutting into any, I wouldn't say it's cutting into any muscle and, and I think it's manageable for what we're asking for this particular situation. So that gives us uh, between that 4,500 and that 4,000, it gives us 8,000. We got to come up with another three grand, and that was kind of where I was going to go with the board. Yeah, is a possibility. Uh, Ms. Klutz, um, uh, can I just generally ask, do we have budget line items for other charitable contributions? Um, no, and I'm not sure that I would call the arts experience as a charitable contribution. Um, it's we pay a dollar per the original arrangement was that the district pay a dollar per student, the school pay a dollar per student, and the arts council pay pay a dollar per student. So that there's a three dollar fee that was split three ways. Um, the arrangement is a little different. We've grown a little bit, but we've also there was a sales tax change in in the year, so it's. So right around 30000 that we contribute. But I wouldn't call it a donation. And what, really ca what category is that? I'm sorry? What category is it's that? It's an instructional supplier, instru instructional material, because all of our um, experiences or field trips are instructional related or we don't do them. So there are not other um, items quite in that no. subcategory? No. And, and I wouldn't call this, I wouldn't put this in that category of a donation. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry for my no. my phrasing. Okay. Yeah, I was not trying to imply it in any way that it was a donation. It is a contribution to help bring arts into our schools, or a contribution, but a, a cost that we bear to help bring the arts into our schools. That was my misunderstanding. Okay. Uh, board members, other ideas for reductions? Well, I'm gonna say it again. Hmm. We don't need food. I mean. If you if we order pizza, I don't know. I mean, we can we can do something like that, but I don't. Kelly, what is the total for how much do we spend on food I every year? I believe it was about close to fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand dollars, y'all. We can go to Little Caesars and get pizza. <laughs> this is crazy. We got to cut the food. Well, we are cutting that by a third. Yeah. I mean, uh, and and it's not board member food. It's staff food as well. Right. We could get so pizza. I'm well, okay I, with pizza. And I think that's what Mindy will look at. Let's go into the, with the reduction we've already put in there. Let's go into the next year and see what Mindy can swing. And maybe we can cut it even more. Um, I vote for cutting the food. That's just what <laughs> I'm saying. The advantage of the, the food is that all y'all people here uh, deserve to have a uh, decent meal to suffer what we put you through till 9 and 10 and 12 o'clock at night a lot of times. 
we appreciate you, but we're we're really struggling to find the nickels and dimes here to get the so teachers Ms. Kless, their, with the their half percent. Error. Are you comfortable with leaving a three thousand dollar variance? I'm only comfortable with letting the board vote. I, at this point, I feel like I have I have done as much as I can do for right. you guys, and I feel like this is this is your vote, and if you vote it, I will do it. Okay. <laughs> Let me let's 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 look at this soberly. When we went into this conversation, um, I guess it was back in August, and uh, it started started talking about it. We started talking about it in June. And then the first yeah. But when we actually started really, when we really started talking bearing about down, it. yeah. Oh, okay. When we actually started, actually got serious about talking about it. <laughs> so the first first thing we applied was uh, when when I talked with Miss Klutz and I, I came up with the first proposal in September. We I had two teaching positions and two clerical positions that Miss Klutz and Dr. Lauder felt like the staff could could do, and then after the conversations went nowhere with our Concord City folks and they just didn't want to help us with uh, with the the elementary school SROs that we had we taken on then they ended up coming to the table with another person in the, another teaching position now these are not people who lose jobs so it's it's uh, it's a cost avoidance and so please understand that when we talk about these jobs they're only cost avoidances but that got us a long way they they made up for what what we lost with with concord i think we we're down to where we have is done as well the best we can without creating a lot of pain in any one area and um the three thousand dollars is is the float that we have board members um we cannot ask Ms. Klutz anymore. I think they've been very generous in what they've done to help us get to this point. And uh, I think they've been team players in this whole e effort. So, um, And I think I, we do have a possibility of reducing the various board expenses. I think we have a possibility of reducing additional legal fees, depending on how we mind yep. the use of the attorneys, um, transportation expenses, could end up being a little bit more depending on you know how the buses are used so you know these aren't exact science numbers and maybe Ms. Cuts part way through next year you can kind of give us an update on are these things working as expected so. so I would like to make a motion that we approve this as a plan not as a this is this is this is the plan that she will use to help her execute and then she has flexibility within the plan to to do what she feels is the best thing to execute according to this but you know she doesn't have to afford each dollar in expense i don't want to hold her to trying to do that type of arithmetic but as a board we say all right kelly and and dr louder or miss klutz and dr louder this is the plan that we've kind of come up with y'all can execute it we'll give you flexibility to work within the within this plan to to make things work out to get to the six hundred and ninety four thousand six hundred and forty three dollars and that's would be my motion and if we had to order pizza for the last six months we'll do it yeah. <laughs> probably fork up twenty dollars or, or chips and salsa, right. chips and salsa. <laughs> so that's my motion on the table is okay. there a second do we have like to second please now we motion. can talk Okay, motion by Mr. Shoemaker, seconded by Mr. Harrison for the discussion. And thank you again, Mr. Shoemaker, for giving us a template to use. So, will this come across as a budget adjustment, or how's, that, how's it going to look? No, we don't, we don't have a budget to adjust, so I'm just going to have to <laughs> build it in. At, but it's not even this year's funds, it's next year's funds, so, so I'm going to have to build okay. it into next year's budget. Hopefully we'll get one. We'll get this year's budget before next year. Any word on when that possibly can happen? No. The no. travail. Miss Miss Bean of Miss Clutch did send a refreshing office. email right before meeting about the status of the budget, yeah. which or yeah. the non-status of the budget. Yeah. So. Okay. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second for the proposal to adopt this as our budget cut template. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 6 0, and we're done talking about that for about a year. <laughs> okay, next the board will 
convene in closed session uh, to consult with an attorney and preserve the attorney-client privilege pursuant to General Statute 143.318.11.83 and to consider confidential personnel matters pursuant to General Statute 143.318.11.86. Take a motion to move to closed session. So moved. Second. <laughs> so, nobody wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Was that Mr. Harrison for the motion? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Shoemaker for the second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you to our viewing audience and those in the room. We appreciate you. And the board will now convene in closed session. Good night. <laughs>